Hello everyone, NatLabs here. Today I'm going to be explaining the Godot Map Crafter system I've created. Um, it's a library, as you can see if I go to Source, and if I go to MapGen, MapGen Handler, and I go to MapGenHandler.gd, this is a, a giant script that just has a bunch of functions that manipulate 2D arrays. So what does a 2D array mean? Well, basically you have an array that stores a bunch of items, um, like numbers for example, if that's a 2, um, 3, but a 2D array stores arrays. So if you have an array, inside is another array, and then another array, and another array, and, and you can keep going. But a 2D array is like this. However, most people like to visualize it like this. So you have an array, and then you have an array, and it's filled in with numbers like 1, 2, etc. And then you do the exact same thing again. So 1, 2, 1, and then you close the array. So this becomes like a map, sort of. And all these functions are basically manipulating 2D arrays, but in Godot. And they come with nice names where you would usually just call this like flip or, you know, circularize or something. Just like apply radial symmetry to the map. And we'll get into what these are. If you want to try it out, literally just go to this path or this link, which I'll put in the description if I remember. And just copy, literally raw. Um, sorry for the flash between black and white. Copy. Go to Godot. Go to a new project in Godot 4.3. Create um, Godot map. Crafter tutorial video project. So yeah, I just created in this folder, create an edit. Okay, so um, I'm going to go to a 2D scene. This can work in 3D too, but you'd have to modify it a bit. So I'm just gonna call this map or world or whatever. I'm gonna save this scene. I'm going to attach a script, map GD, and I'm going to go to file, new script, and I'm gonna call this the map gen handler. And I'm just going to copy paste. So control A and then control V and then save. So now I have the library installed, if you want to like air quotes installed into Godot. But what it really means is when I go to my uh, variables and let's say I wanted to make the map gen handler. Let me just zoom in a bunch. If I have my map gen handler, I can literally go. And if you do exactly what I did, you should just be able to type in map gen handler dot new. And now we can use the library in the ready function. For example, ready generate, oh sorry, map gen handler dot generate blank map with a width of let's say 30 and a height of 30 and cell to set now cell to set width is an integer and if we go to our map gen handler you can see at the very top of the script there are a few tiles defined such as wall floor interest and extra i thought these were good for testing purposes and also most games just have wall and floor tiles you could add door you could add i don't know like ocean or water or whatever you could add extras however you would have to adapt some of the functions below to that although a lot of them take in a cell some might not work and that's because i am all just one person working on this map gen library however we have wall tile and floor tile just for ease of use and specification although in reality wall tile is just zero and floor tile is just one because this is the zeroth position and this is the first position anyways um so generate blank map and then we're going to uh cell to set with just mgh dot floor tile okay and if i run this scene current scene i run it and nothing happens. Why? Because we didn't print anything. Well, okay, that's fine. Uh, let's print something. So let's do mgh dot print map, and um, it's asking us to pass in a map, which is just an array, which we can actually make. So we're going to call var map equals an array, and we're just going to pass in map. However, the key among you, if you want to pause and think about it, you can. However, if you don't want to pause and think about it, that's fine. I'll just tell you in a bit because I'm kind of supposed to. This map variable is just a blank array. And if I run the scene, I will just get nothing again. Because the way the system works is even though I might have my 2D array over here. So this is just a, a singular one dimensional array. This generate blank map function actually returns an array. So if I control click this function, you can see it takes me not to the documentation, but it takes me to the actual library or this giant script. And it says over here, generate a map, generates a 2D array with a given width and height. And you can see, you can read it word for word, line by line. Just declare a variable of an array. Go for y in height, append an array. And then for x in width, just set that cell. Like take that integer and then set it, like paint the map with this cell that we chose. And you can kind of extend that idea to generate a random map where it like based off a random value and a threshold, which you can supply, set it either to tile one or tile two. And then you can do the same thing with a bordered map. Now a bordered map would just be based on a given x and y. There's a tile that's on the outside and then a different type of tile on the inside. The same idea for a diagonal map and a row map. You might be wondering, wow, there's so many functions. How will I ever know what there is? There is, and I have made documentation for this. Um, you can see over here, basic map functions, such as set cell, get cell, blah, blah, blah. 
I will make a longer video maybe in the future explaining a lot of these functions. For example, you can do some crazy things with this like generate caves, maps. I'm not here for all that. I'm just here to show how to actually get up and running with this. So what I'm going to do every single line is going to do, I'm going to do map equals map generate blank map um, or map generate blah, blah, blah. And now you can see over here, we can print map. Um, this map is actually just a bunch of emojis. Extend this saying map equals MGH and I'm going to do draw a box or draw border. And what should this border size be? Or actually not draw border, but draw natural, natural border. And let's say a natural border is basically like a border, but each row or column is going to have a different like height or width of the border. So it will kind of look like this. If you wanted to, you could always go to the documentation and search it up and see examples with a GIF and everything. There's even a little implementation here showing exactly how like min wall thickness, max wall thickness, blah, blah, blah. If the minimum is one, the maximum should be like five. And then the wall tile will be obviously MGH. So map gen handler wall tile. And then uh, the map we're going to be passing in is the same one that we're setting it to because each time we talk to map gen handler, we're giving it a map. So the first time we talk, we're like, okay, generate a blank map. Okay, here's a blank map. Oh, you don't want this blank map anymore? You want me to draw something? Okay. Then that's kind of the story. And then we ask it to print and then the print goes there. Anyways, now if I run this, you can see we have a map with kind of like puffy walls and stuff. Maybe we don't want like, sorry, not puffy, but like scrambly, or I really don't know the correct term, but let's say you want to smooth things out. Well, if you just search up smooth or apply, okay, there's two smoothing and remove smooth and remove there's two you can smooth and remove debris or apply smoothing let's just do apply smoothing so we're going to pass in our map and then the wall tile is going to be obviously wall tile uh mgh dot floor tile and then uh, apply smoothing like five times if we if we apply smoothing five times you, you can see that we get something smooth however it's not the best if i click f5 to run again uh, and you can see that we get blobs if you wanted to and of course our map is equal to mgh non over like draw non overlapping walk what does that mean if you draw non over if you just search it up in this on this website nadlabs.xyz slash godot map crafter docs it would literally show you in this little gif over here what exactly it means and it even gives you a little description saying it will perform a like a random walk but it will not go over itself so if we go back to godot our start pause can be i don't know um, let's just ask mgh for a random point in map and the map we're going to ask it for is the map that we're working with steps let's say we're going to take i don't know 200 steps and cell to set is floor tile and uh, the map we're going to be using is our map and if we run it you can see it doesn't look good um oh let's use wall tile instead my mistake um and you can see we got nothing nothing and uh, oh there we go we get some kind of interesting pattern of course you can use um, a bigger map as well so that would obviously make things a lot more interesting like 60 by 70 and uh yes you can see in the middle of our giant map we have a little walk and uh let's say we take this a step further and go um expand expand apply expanded tiles now that might not be intuitive but again i'm just showing you how you would kind of use this um library and you can see it takes the tiles and just kind of expands them and you can make maps with that so if we do this and expansion size i don't know four tile to set mgh dot wall tile and then map if we're passing in the same map if we run the scene you can see that we get a big blob and if we run it again and you can see over here now we get something more naturalistic for example um you could walk in this way and you have to force the player to go around um and you might be saying how do i know where the player wants to go well we can obviously do map equals mgh dot apply um or, or find it's add find uh most uh distant points and let's say you wanted to just do mgh dot um get section uh of a certain tile so random get a random section so uh sorry not get a random section get largest section by tile type and obviously we want to get it by floor tile and then comma number points let's say 10 um that works so if we save it um why are you drawing an error at me uh number points what is wrong with you oh map of our map um oops okay so that's where i messed up so instead of this, I want to do var points is equal to um, this. And I'm going to do 4i in points. At the moment, I might not be making sense, but I'll skip ahead in the video where it will make sense. Now you can see that the map has changed a lot. Um, although it's not the perfect map, um, this is just a very, very quick demo on how you could get up and running. So you, right now, what the code looks like is it's changed a bit. So we're going to make a blank map. We're going to draw an overlapping a non-overlapping walk at a random place 
And then we're going to draw it in the center of the map, just so we always have something there, kind of like this blob. We're going to expand the section, and then we're going to draw a natural border. Then we're going to smooth it. And then MGH doesn't just return maps based off its functions. It could also return points or an array of points. So we're going to ask this map function or this map handler, can you find the most distance point, distant points from each other? And you could also just do find most distance points with padding from the wall. So it's going to ask for a section, which I will explain more in a later video, but it, the map gen handler basically asks, or it has the capability of just going around and saying, okay, I'm going to find like a random point and I'm going to figure out how big the section is. So it's going to go around and be like, okay, this is all part of the same section, section, section. And it'll, it'll understand that this is one section of floor tiles. Like all of this is floor tiles and it will make sure not to get this. It'll understand this is a section. This is a section because technically if a section is going to be defined by a group of tiles and it has a border of different tiles, then that's a section. So we're just going to ask the map gen handler, oh, give me the largest section of the floor tile. So it'll get the, all this green stuff. It'll say, it'll say, okay, what's your map? Um, the map we're currently working with. Um, and then it'll ask for the wall array or the wall section. So I'm just going to change the function to reflect that. So largest, um, get section of largest tile. So MG, MGH dot wall tile um, of the same map. And then uh, number of points, let's just do like 10 points. And then the minimum distance from the wall would be like 10. So right now you can see that these red dots are the points of interest, so to speak, but they're very close to the wall. So now if we run it, it's going to take into that padding and it's going to make sure it's not near the wall. It will take a little bit longer to run, but you can see we have points that are kind of away from the wall. Sometimes it's still a work in progress, but now we have points that are very distally related. And let's say these are spawn locations or uh, loot places like the map gen handler is designed for video games like this is not a bad map like considering you're over here you have to run around you know you have to collect stuff you know go back this is a potential map that you can use and you know it's just fun and interesting to play with um obviously it takes a little bit longer because it has to calculate that distance from the walls and whatnot but you know it's there it's working and obviously you can keep on going and going and going with this and the possibilities are quite literally endless okay so license under the mit license like you can do anything you want with this basically as long as you read this license, which is basically a free for all from my understanding, don't take that as legal advice. And yeah, this is just a very quick video on showing you how to get up and running. I can show you a few other examples in one second. If you download the project off GitHub, you'll be greeted with something like this. And you can see over here that you can make very, very interesting maps. Now, obviously this map isn't connected because I was explaining something during a tutorial and it wasn't working properly, but you know, we have a lot of different map functions that you can generate. For example, this is a bad map, and that's because I was still testing. However, if you get the new, if you get everything working together properly, um, it is possible to generate really, really interesting maps. For example, over here, you know, you can have the blue stuff as floor, and then the red stuff as you know, um, walls, and it just works with Godot's regular tile map. Like I have a tile map here off uh, itch.io. I don't remember where, but hopefully, I remember to link this because I really like this tile map. Um, and you know, you or as I believe it's using this one, but you know, just walls and um, it makes a really interesting map, you know, interesting choices. And, you know, um, the idea is like for other maps, you could have places to hide behind for fast paced combat. And you can see how this can be used in 3d as well, because you can make walls, dungeons, stuff like that, or corridors. Um, a lot of these maps are rectangular. Okay, there we go. Now it's, um, rectangular horizontally, but the idea is to give you maps that you could actually use in a game with no, um, time and development or, scratching your head on making it yourself of course you'd have to tweak it a bunch and like condition it to your game but the idea is to make a bunch of maps that are cool and fun to use the reason they weren't working is because i did not apply connections and obviously now that i'm running the game or now i'm running this scene you can see that there's a bunch of new ones hopefully i remember to also put a timestamp to this place in the video where i'm just generating a bunch of cool maps and the time you see it takes to load like i click r to restart the map is being generated it's defining noise and boom now we have the map. It takes a few seconds to generate these. Um, that was almost instantaneous for something this crazy. One. Okay, there we go. Boom. We have a very blocky map. One, two. And then we have a really crazy map with a bunch of caves and open areas. One. And boom. It's already done. One, two, three. Okay, this one's taking long. Four. Okay, boom. Why did it take long? I have no clue. But this one's a really, really weird map. Um, I believe it takes long because of the function that is not optimized. But room, 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 room. You know, a, a boss room or mini boss room. Room, 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 room. And then a final boss, you know, like these could be designed for really specific maps that you could never, ever paint by hand. This one is just crazy. I can't believe I caught this on recording. This is insane. But um, 
just a bunch of maps and I hopefully you play with this library and whatnot um, take it expand modify it even shout out me at github to like add something I'll be glad to accept any forks or any you know pull requests whatever but hopefully this very short video that should be less than 15 minutes um, explains everything that I wanted to explain for this little library and uh, I hope you have fun using it if not I hope you at least look at it and see how I've made it and apply it to other aspects or games. I'll explain more of it in later tutorials as it develops, but as of now, I believe that is a good representation. So I hope this was interesting or entertaining and have an amazing day. Um, it generates the same thing. That's not a problem. It, all you have to do is randomize and it sets a new seed for everything and gives you a new map. Um, in this case, it didn't. Uh, so what you want to do is you'd want to go all the way up here and you would want to randomize. Yeah, it's randomized. Uh, did it not give me a new map? I thought it was a new map. Oh, no, it is a new map. Okay, each time it's a new map. Oh, thank God.